John Corning gets it. He helped get money right to the local school district so they could provide a healthy environment. We need to do everything we can to ensure that our schools are safe. Now that's one of Senator John Cornyn's campaign spots, a portion of it anyway, talking about health, safety, and schools. Health has obviously been a big topic this campaign cycle on all sides about the pre-existing conditions, which many believe is in danger with Republicans' vows to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act. Let's talk about, Senator, the PROTECT Act that you're co-sponsoring that you hope to at least maintain the pre-existing conditions part of what has been in the Affordable Care Act. Yeah, I think there's some people that are that have argued that the only way you could do it is through the Affordable Care Act. But even my uh, my my Democratic friends have moved on from that and no longer are advocating the Affordable Care Act because, frankly, the promises that were made when it was originally sold that if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your policy, you can keep your policy. And the promise of low affordable premiums. Now a family of four can see a deductible of up to twelve thousand dollars, which is basically no coverage at all. So they've realized that that has not delivered the promises they made. So now they've moved on uh, to things like Medicare for all, a single payer system. But to answer your question, I think everybody agrees that pre-existing conditions should be covered. What, 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 so what's in place? What, what's gonna be in place of the Affordable Care Act? We've been hearing about repeal and replace We've heard a lot about the repeal part, but not an awful lot about replacing. And I understand that the Affordable Care Act, if it's gone, there are people who will lose insurance. So what's your side of the aisle talking about as a replacement? The president has talked about it's coming, it's coming. Just what, what's in store? Well, you, you mentioned the PROTECT Act, which I've introduced, which would cover pre-existing conditions. There's also another bill called the Better Care Act. Some have suggested that we take the money we're spending on the Affordable Care Act and block grant it to the states and allow them to help work with their population, whether a Medicaid population or other, to provide them more choices. But basically, uh, we should build on what we have and not destroy it, which is what a single payer system would do. It would basically outlaw uh, coverage 180 million people get from their, Americans get from their employer. And so I think the Affordable Care Act was designed to deal with people who didn't get their insurance uh, from their employer or through the government and um, to make that affordable. Well, that, that has not turned out to be the case. So what I would do is give people more choices to buy the coverage they want at a price they can afford, but that's gonna require the restoring of a marketplace where people can shop from different types of coverage. But we also need to do things like the state of Texas has done, like eliminate surprise billings. We need to bring down out-of-pocket costs uh, for uh, prescription drugs by companies that game the patent system, for example. And we need to provide, at least in this pandemic, uh, extension of, of uh, subsidies for COBRA, which is uh, the name, as you know, for right. the, the way you maintain your employer-provided coverage if you lose your employer coverage. Uh, so those that's a package of provisions, I think, that would would be a, a good replacement for uh, the Affordable Care Act. Are you concerned about the gap that might happen if the Affordable Care Act is ruled not uh, viable and this it takes away and there's nothing in its place? I mean, there, you talked about the people who who don't have employer insurance. Those are the ones who would be most impacted by that. Yeah, I think we, we stand ready to stand ready to do that, um, but the. Um, Right now, the case that's in front of the Supreme Court really has to do with whether the individual mandate, which has now been brought down to zero, the penalty for not buying the government-approved coverage, is is severable as a technical term from the rest of the case. I'm pretty pretty confident that the Supreme Court will say that the rest of the Affordable Care Act can stand once you separated it from the unconstitutional individual mandate. I know that's down in the weeds a little bit, mm. maybe too much, uh, but. There really is, a, I believe, a, a consensus about giving people some choices. But right now, um, our, our Democratic colleagues keep coming back to the Affordable Care Act when, in fact, they've moved on and realized that it hadn't met the needs that they claimed it would. You know, it brings up, how, how uh, concerned are you about the, your, the Senate being able to get back to a level of civility in terms of doing the it From the viewer's point of view, it just looks just awful and and with your party who uh you know four years ago said we don't want to have a, a justice confirmed during an election year and then it changed radically once you had a chance to do it 
Uh, you know, if the shoe on the other foot, you'd be screaming like the Democrats are screaming now, I guess. But how concerned are you about being able to have the kind of body that the Senate is supposed to be? Well, there's no doubt that the nation is polarized now, um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Hopefully, this election will resolve some of that polarization. Um, but there are some people who never really believe that uh, President Trump was legitimately elected, and uh, and that's been a problem. People haven't accepted the the vote, the uh, verdict of the of the voters. I think that's absolutely critical. No matter who wins and who loses, that we honor. Uh, our election system and that we support it. Uh, but, you know, I've I've worked in the Senate with uh, people who have very different points of view from me. For example, uh, Chris Murphy from uh, Connecticut, who on the Second Amendment is much more aggressive anti-Second Amendment uh, than certainly I am a supporter of the Second Amendment. Well, we, we work together to create the first enhancement of the background check system for gun sales in, uh, in the last 25 years, and some 6 million new people have been added to the FBI's background checklist uh, when it comes to gun sales. So mm -hmm. finding even controversial issues like that and finding common ground is something that I enjoy doing and, and I've been successful in doing. So I, that's, to me, the recipe to polarization is finding that common ground and working together. All right, you, 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 you've got that one person. This is a hypothetical situation. Now, you have that one person who hasn't voted, you're stepping on the elevator with you. you got uh, 20 seconds to close the deal. What do you tell them, Senator? Well, I think the most important thing in this election is, uh, is safely uh, reopening our economy and restoring our economy to the one that's the envy of the, of the nation and the world. That's why people have voted with their feet and come to Texas, because we still believe uh, in the American dream, and it's still available to anybody who's willing to come to our state and work hard. Senator Corner, thank you for your service. To the people of Texas and United States of America, stay safe. Good luck on the campaign trail. We'll see you down the road, okay? Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir.